Hey everybody, Seville here, and today we're going to be going through the Pickle Rick room on Try Hack Me, a Rick and Morty themed CTF, where we help turn Rick back into a human from a pickle. <clears throat> so, without uh, wasting too much time today, I'll go ahead and get right into it. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to waste just a little bit of your time, I apologize, to just say I appreciate all the support uh, here recently, and I just want you to, to know it doesn't go unnoticed. I know that, uh, you know, the start of this, uh, these videos are a little rocky, and um, I can only promise that it'll get better, and uh, the content will slowly develop into something a little bit, uh, hopefully it already is, but if it isn't, uh, I hope to develop it into more fruitful um, learning stuff for, learning hacking stuff for you all, and again, I just appreciate um, the recent support, and I just want you to know it doesn't go unnoticed. So, now that I've wasted that little bit of time thanking you all, I will go ahead and get right into it. So, as you can see, I have already deployed the machine, and I have also already completed this machine, so I will just be going over the steps I, um, you know, used to achieve the 100% uh, the here and completed the box. So, let's go ahead and hop into the one and only task here. I'm going to go ahead and read the short description it has for us. It says, this Rick and Morty themed challenge requires you to exploit a web server to find three ingredients that will help Rick make his potion to transform himself back into a human from a pickle. So with that, we know that we need to exploit a web server to find these three ingredients. So let's go ahead and do that. We uh, can go ahead and copy this IP address and uh, enter it in here. If you were, you know, by chance worried that the web server was being hosted on a non-standard port, you could simply run an in-map scan and I'll get our terminal set up here. And you could just run a pretty basic in-map scan. I'm going to always run my the, uh, the standard that I always have for myself, which is dash SC for default scripts, SV for enumerate all versions, and then output that to usually a in-map directory as open ports.txt. I have already ran that. Um, when I previously did the box, so I can just cat that out for us so that we can save some time there. So let's see that. And we see that there's only two ports open, which is HTTP on port 80 and SSH on port 22. So it's a standard web server port, so we can head straight over to 1010.195.116 without any uh, modification there. And upon um, entering the site, um, First thing I noticed was the fact that there's no like menu button or pages that were linked here. It's just a help message to Morty saying that he needs to find the last three secret ingredients for the pickle reverse potion and the fact that Rick doesn't remember the password, so we have to find that as well. So with that missing, the first thing I was going uh, going to look for was in fact the username because it's got to be somewhere out here. And if we view the page source, we see that there's a comment left that has the username Rick Rules. So that is very interesting. We can go ahead and copy that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get tmux started up and we can start a uh, creds.txt file for our credentials. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now we can move on from there. Since there's not much information, uh, we can start a go buster because there's no menu, there's no link pages. So we're, we're going to need to do some. Um, brute forcing on the web directories to see what we can find. So GoBuster can do that for us with ease. Let's change over to that directory real quick. And we're going to run GoBuster. We're going to supply the dir command because we want to do some uh, directory brute forcing. And we'll do the dash u flag for the URL, which is 1010.195.116. The word list that we want to use is in uh, word list, dir buster. And it's going to be the directory list. 2.3 small and we'll bump up the threads to 40 and then we will supply the dash x flag because we want to look for PHP uh, pages there extensions at least and it immediately shoots out the login.php assets and portal.php and we can go ahead and end it there because that is about all we need and I'm almost certain that's about all it will actually supply for us so we can only um, you know assume that login.php is in its respective right a login page and we can confirm that by going over to 1010 uh, 195.116 login.php and see that is in fact a uh, login page and uh, it 
you know, just need it needs a username and password, and we can assume that our username and password works well in this in this area here. However, we still need that password. We could go over to assets, which was another directory that GoBuster found, and it's just a few pictures, some JavaScript files, and some CSS. And originally, I did um, save all these photos to my um, pickle rick directory and i used strings to see if maybe the password was obfuscated in in the photos and that was not fruitful whatsoever so um i banged my head against the you know against the keyboard for a second trying to figure out what i may have done wrong and then you could view the page source here oops you can actually view the page source here instead of going back and see that there's no comments left there either until i realized that i forgot and left out one very important and special page and that was robots.txt upon going to robots.txt it is a very non-standard um you know a response there wubba lubba dub dub it's not something uh you see too often on a robots.txt um, page so at that moment i almost you know i was pretty certain that that was probably going to be our password because like i said you're never going to see wubba lubba dub dub anywhere on a robots.txt outside of this room here. So we can head back to the portal.php or login.php. Portal.php just redirects, as you can see, to login.php, and we can input that password. And we can go back over to our reds.txt file, cat out that Rick rules, copy it, and put it into our username field and try to log in and see that it is successful. So we know that that is in fact valid credentials. So let's go back over to robot.txt, copy that wubba lubba dub dub, and edit our creds.txt file to make sure that we have um, it completed. And we know that these are in fact valid credentials and we can save those should we need it in the future. Um, that's always good practice. So we have valid credentials. We now have access to Rick's portal, and we have a few few new pages here, and also a command panel where we can execute commands. Um, if you look over at potions, you see that you get a deny.php redirect. It says only the real Rick can view this page, and you get that for almost every page. Well, you do get that for every page here. So all these pages are um, rendered useless right now. And if we go over to commands, and you just try to run the command, the first command I ran was actually to list and I noticed that I can now run you know, basic shell commands. So I could do something like print working directory. And I know that I'm now basically um, on this box and I'm, I have the ability to print shell commands. So if we list again, we see the file, uh, we see the uh, directories that we were able to access previously, robots, portal, login, index, denied is one of the uh, pages that we get trying to go to these um, other directories here for potions and Beth, uh, Beth clone notes. But uh, two things that we see that are interesting is the super secret uh, pickle ingred.txt and then clue.txt. Well, um, originally I just went to those um, those directories. So if you go to clue.txt, obviously it says look around the file system for other ingredients. And uh, obviously this is going to be our answer to number one, which is the super secret ingredient or ingrid. And it's Mr. Meeseek's hair, or Mr. Meeseek hair. So that is, in fact, our answer to number one. And respectfully, number two is what is the second ingredient? Well, the clue.txt told us that we need to look around the file system. And we have the ability to execute um, shell commands in order for us to do so. So we could do uh, ls command. And at that point, uh, you could do uh, actually not just ls and on the root directory, we would want to do uh, ls on the uh, on a list the directory home to see that we have a Rick and Ubuntu user know that we are not Rick if we run a who am I so we can list the contents of Rick if we have the ability and we find these second ingredients so we could attempt to cat out those second ingredients so cat home Rick and then second ingredients gotta make sure I type that right and we find out that the command is disabled. So we can run a few things here uh, in order to make it a little bit easier for myself. I'm just going to copy this out real quick. So now we can try like nano 
and we see that the command is disabled. We can do uh, vim, command is disabled. We can do more, oops, command is disabled until eventually I got to less where we find that the less is not a disabled, disabled command. And the answer to our second ingredient question is the one Jerry tier. As you can see, that is in fact correct, which leads us to the uh, third and final question. What's the final ingredient Rick needs? And at that moment, um, I was pretty sure that I would have to get into the root directory, so we would need to do some privilege escalation. And if you wanted to be sure, you could always list um, the Ubuntu directory just to see what was in there. You'd find nothing. You could essentially list everything in there just in case you thought something was um, hiding out and you can find that there's nothing interesting. Um, you don't have access to the uh, hidden SSH holder. Bash, bash history is not readable, so nothing good there. You could do the same on Ricks, but you'll find nothing as well. So I resorted to the only thing that um, that I'm used to or you know that I'm accustomed to and that is using a basic Lin uh, Linux privilege escalation cheat sheet uh, specifically got milks so if I just went over to privilege escalation it's usually the first one and you could just basically just run through this entire thing and eventually you will come across this command where you will find out that WW data who you are running commands as can sudo with no password on everything. So you could essentially sudo ls root and see the third and final ingredient where you can then change up and do less root and then uh, third.txt. Where you would get the third and final ingredient which is Glebe juice. And we know that is in fact the final answer. At that point you would have completed the box 100%, but I know that uh, your hacker thirst just isn't quenched by just simply finishing the box from this, you know, very simple, simplistic command panel and you want a shell because, well, just the hacker that you are requires such a thing. So if you do a little bit more um, enumerating, you could try like netcat because you, you want to get a shell. You find out that that's disabled and you could try all these things. My, you know, my go-to is usually Python. So I did Python 3 version and I find out that Python 3.5.2 is installed on the machine so we could go over to Pintest Monkey and once we go to Pintest Monkey we can go to cheat sheets reverse shell, shell cheat sheets and we can get that Python reverse shell we can edit that to match our IP address oops I just did another terminal there I don't need that I need a text editor we can paste that in there. I know my IP address is 10.8.13.197. If I could type, that'd be even better. So we edit this just a little bit, 9001. It is Python 3, so we're gonna need to change that just a tad, and we can copy that now and minimize that. We'll also close this terminal. And we can go back over to our command panel, get that set up. But before we just go and execute this command, we need to set up our netcat so that we are listening and waiting for a connection as well. So let's clear this out, set up netcat on 9001. Now that that's ready, we should be able to execute this Python 3 command uh, to get a shell going. So if we do that, oh, did I do it wrong? 10, 8, 13, 197, Python 3, everything looks right there. Do, do, do. 9001, let's get a space there just in case. 10813197, let's just make sure that is in fact my IP address. Ten eight thirteen one ninety seven. that is right. Um, Python 3, let's see, yep, yep, yep. Everything looks good. And we can exit that. LVMP 9001 execute. Let's see there. That, now it's going to make me into a liar. Let's see Python. Oh, look at that. I didn't copy it all. Well, that's not going to do me any good. Just go ahead and 
that. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and make that command right, actually. We can do that. And it's going to be boop, boop. Wait, it is there. It is entirely there. So I'm actually just messing up somewhere. Well, this is a good time to learn. So let's figure this out. We can just recopy it here. Put it in our text editor. Once more, final time, promise. And we can change this to 9001. This to 10, 8, 13, 197. I'm going to go back and watch this video, and I bet I probably forgot a period between uh, the 10 and the 8. Just my assumption, unless it's already in here. I must have. Was I copying that the whole time? I hope not. That's going to hurt me even more. Okay, so we know that's right now. We need to change this. I did forget to add the three here. So we know our IP address is right in the uh, in this Python command. We know that we're listening on 9001 on netcat. So when we execute, we should, there we go. Now we have um, good old netcat running. And we can run who am I, and then we can sudo um, less dash root and then third dot txt. And we get that third ingredient. And you could also sudo dash l and get that, uh, get that information as well. So at that moment, you have officially rooted the box. And you have complete access as well. So um, that's, that's pretty much about it. Um, you could spawn a full TTY shell if you weren't, uh, you know, if you weren't uh, amused with this. I always forget the exact command. So uh, Python TTY sh shall, it's just shell. And let's see, it's just this command here. Oh, well, that's actually going to be Python 3 for us. So let's... Change that just a tad. There we go, and then we can sudo root. There we go. And now we have a root shell. So then we could just cd root and ls. And then cat. I wonder if we could cat. Actually, I haven't tried that. And there we go. Now you have complete, uh, complete access as root, and you have a root shell as well. So you have completely rooted this box. You can do whatever you want as root user, and you are complete. Well, that is pretty much it. I won't waste any more of your time today. I certainly appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned a little something, maybe a different way uh, to go about the end of this box, or maybe um, you know you didn't even have to get the reverse shell at all. You didn't know that you could just do it all from the command panel. I don't know. Hopefully you learned something. I, I hope. <laughs> I uh, appreciate you watching as always. Um, let me know if I can you know make these videos a little bit better in any way. I don't know. I don't. I'm trying to end this video in the best way possible. Uh, thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day. I will catch you on the next video. Goodbye.